to with Craig Higgum. We are about to carry on and find out more about him and find out why he's doing this solo and why specifically we are doing this interview in this location that we're in. So Craig, you had the choice to decide on where we was doing the interview today. So why are we doing the interview on this street specifically? Uh, well, we're here in Den Denmark Street. Tim, okay. The old Tim Pan Alley, as they used to call it. Uh, my guitar is actually being serviced at the moment in a little place I know around the corner. Oh, nice. So I brought it down here today. And I thought, yeah, why not we do a little interview here because it's just so historic. Every, you know, anyone who knows about music will know of this street it's in history of all the songwriters who wrote here. Okay. So it's a historic place, and it's a church, St Giles Church, which is a nice, uh, inspiring church as well. So, okay. Yeah, this is why. You know, there's lots of memories. I remember a place on the corner here. It was, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a metal bar, and uh, you'd walk in, and the whole floor would be glass. Wow. <laughs> so wow. you know, I'd, I'd maybe stay a little bit before people started throwing bottles. And yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it's probably not there anymore because of health and safety. I would have thought so. Yeah, I think it's actually like a coffee place now. So. Okay, okay. It's a, it's funny how things change. It's funny, definitely how things yes. change. And the memories come back when you come back to an area. Well. Okay, okay. So, why did you feel like you needed to bring this your guitar to this area? I've like, known I mean, these guys. Yeah, I've, 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 it's true. I, I think it's because the you know. I live fairly central, so it's easy for me to get to. Plus, I, I've been here before, so. And you know, if you ever need anything, if you need some strings or you need something, you can always come down here. Okay. I know you were saying about Bowie earlier. He used to come down here and busk in there, I think, sometime in the 60s. Oh, down wow. there on the corners around here. So, it, you know, it's just a nice atmosphere. It's inspiring. You come around this place and you've got, you know, it's good it's still here because at one point it was going to close down. Okay. They were going to maybe even take away the street, but we're here in 2020. So, uh, pandemic. How, <laughs> thing, how things changed. And yes. you say, like, in, in fact, this is a question I should ask you, is how many singles or tracks did you have to work on before you got to this album? So, like, you With know... solo uh, album? Yeah. Well, so you know... How, how many years have you been working on... I've been playing since I was about four or five. I've been playing the drums. Okay. On my Instagram, I kind of just posted a picture of me with one of my early drum kits at five. Okay. Uh, so it's just it's always been there really you know but recording and, and, you know guitar from 13 and then recording actual music and overdubbing you know since about 15 14, 14 I, started, I started to compose more and, and you know layer on uh, different tracks and create my own music tracks so 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 really what you're saying is that you've literally been only playing music for 15 years because you, you do look to me <laughs> do look to the one well, you're yeah. too kind you know. Well, you know, the thing is now, I, with, when I have the mask on, I keep getting ID. Okay, you know, okay. And I'm saying to people, you know, obviously if I didn't have the mask, I'm sure you'd see I was a bit older, but yeah. that's very kind of you. Well, it's, 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 it's alright. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure there's a, there's going to be a lot of uh, ladies and, and, and other, maybe gentlemen <laughs> out there that are, are like looking at him and saying, oh, he's, he's too young to, to, to well, have you, a band. You know, in you look very young yourself. So, well, so. thank you very much. It, it's it's, it's the, the photo in the attic, they say. <laughs> yeah, as you're, you're, you're at the, the photo in the attic gets older while you stay younger. Okay, so, all right, so um, you've said that, well, you've not really said how long you've been make, working on an album. The album, it, 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 going back from the very first demo of the album, it's a long, I think the earliest demos, I've recently been cataloging all my old songs, and there's thousands of songs, uh, but the earliest songs from this album I'm working on are from about 2013. Okay. So there was, I think about 50% of the album is from about that time, but then there is stuff that was written a bit later. Okay. And one of the tracks in particular, I remember I lost, I left the project for a while and lost the original music to it. Okay. I had to rewrite the song <laughs> from memory. Oh, so wow. one of the tracks on there is a track called Elijah Main. That was had, I had to rewrite it. I had the lyrics, but I didn't have the chords, and uh, I, but like, it turned out pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty okay. happy with the version that I, I, I rewrote it. So would you say that this version is better than the, um, the original version, or would you say it's a it's 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 a, be a better hearing um, uh, solo um, track? Than the original. I would say it's difficult because I, I can't remember the, the original one that well. Obviously, I, if I again, I would have used it, but yeah. I think it's probably definitely equally as good. Okay. Or better. Okay. All right. Well, it, it seems like you know we've been talking about this this album for a while, and, and it seems like we're going to have to sort out a situation where we're going to hear you um, perform at least um, a acapella of the the, the track, one of the tracks, or acoustic version of one of the tracks just so we can have a, 
a feel of um, you know what we're talking about because really and truly right about now I might know what the album sounds like you would know, definitely know what the album sounds like but the people that are watching will not know what it sounds like well, there is um, there is a video on you on my YouTube okay. of one of the songs called Tomorrow's Park okay and also on the SoundCloud page which is again creating creating a music you can find that there's two tracks Emily Zion and Sion there's two tracks they're, they're not the finished tracks they're the only demo versions but they're on okay. Spotify they're on uh, SoundCloud sorry at the moment okay. so if you go on SoundCloud there's two tracks from the album and there's one track on YouTube at the moment so you can hear a few tracks early versions of the songs okay so get a feel for what the album is going to be so basically what you're saying is if I, if I twist your arm softly I might <laughs> be able to sample uh, the, the music video in the interview just to give people a taste of you could do that you know yes. yeah the okay. magic of uh, yeah the, the magic of technology it's gonna just go woo and it's yeah. gonna be on exactly. you know yeah. um, so that's awesome that's awesome okay so all right so you've talked about you being in a band you've also talked about you having a solo um, like what has you been your journey on, on getting to a point where you've got an album a group album you've got a solo album what has been the journey to get you there like have you done busking have you done open like what was the journey of you getting to becoming you know craig uh yeah i mean lots of playing really lots of gigging you said about busking i used to go busking years okay. ago down in I used to be down in south bank and i did a lot of that it was great kind of practice okay. i did the open mic scenes in there kind of uh, would have been around the late noughties and then early teens, okay. you know, like 2009, 10. Yeah. And then I started to do more big shows before I uh, had different bands before I formed the band. So it's all been kind of part of the experience of gaining experience to get to certain points and write in certain ways and different styles. Okay. You know? um, it all kind of comes together. And obviously traveling with the band as well um, and playing music wherever I go with. Really. Okay. And, and do you have like music in fact, like, what, did you grow up in music? Uh, did any of your family members um, inspire you to be in yeah. music? Yeah, like, I mean, how did you get I into mean, music? It all, go, it all goes back a long way. You know, my father, my mother, um, my great great grandfathers okay. were banjo players. Oh wow! And they were twins, and uh, they, you know, you know, that's we're talking about, you know, over a hundred years ago now. Okay. Uh, this is, and then on both sides of my family, they're all, and even to this day now, there's lots of musicians in my family as well. So. Um, it's, it's a great thing, you know. It's a great to see that you know the music was there in the past, but it's still coming there today as well. So, so it's in a way, it's like you carrying on a legacy, and, and you yeah. and you know, it's, it's a good thing that you love what you're doing because you'd feel like you'd have to run with the baton. Like if you was doing a relay, you still have to keep it going until um, you exceed the the the, the um, success for you and your your family. Yeah of at least the achievements, not not the side of the money, but the, the achievements and how far you will take the family name. Yeah, you just keep going with it, and I think it's something that's deep within, you know. Okay. And uh, I think that's an important thing to kind of follow if it's inside of you, you need to just keep doing it, you know. Okay, so it's nice to hear that, you know, you, you not just grab the guitar for the ladies, because I know there's, there's, there's probably a few ladies out there that like, a musician. I, I know when I was growing up, it was awesome to to be a musician because you know if you can sing, there's there's more chance of you um, uh, <laughs> being being heard by uh, the opposite sex because they know that at least they can hear you if the CD player didn't work or the tape deck didn't work or sure. that you know you'd have the electrics to run a amplifier and. Um, record uh, turntable and equalizer you could have someone if you could sing um could you know almost uh, lighten someone's mood you know or beatbox or, or beatbox you know and and it sounds like can we do can we do both i can beep yeah because when i was a kid i used to have groups of children around me asking me to play different songs from the charts okay so the early memory i have being about you know nine or ten or eleven Okay. And uh, all the kids wanted, wanted me to play. I used to start charging them and say, give me, give me, give me okay. a pound and I'll... Okay. <laughs> it's like a jukebox, you know. An entrepreneur, uh, early. Yeah, before I was even really playing the guitar, I was writing by beatboxing. Okay. Know? 
was taking inspiration from you know lots of different places but uh, it became a bit bigger I think a bit later and by that point I was playing more guitar but I still I still sometimes do it and I I, I, I write I can write that way as well yeah. okay that's awesome that's awesome all right well we, it's been nice me and Craig have definitely uh, felt like we bonded even more um, yeah. Yeah. 